Greetings again today in the name of Jesus Christ, our wonderful Lord and Savior. Good to see you here in the house of the Lord on this last Sunday in this year. Beautiful day God's given us in which we can worship. I most certainly appreciate your presence. We welcome our visitors and you that's listening out in the radio listening audience. I'm glad that you tuned in to the Northside Baptist Church Hour. If you get on your phone and call a friend and have them to tune in and get this hour coming up, I believe we can be a blessing to them. And we appreciate that so very much. Now, this is Preacher Edward speaking. We're coming to you live right from the auditorium of the Northside Baptist Church here in Athens, Georgia. Now, if you have your Bibles, turn, will you please, to Philippians chapter 3, page 1259 in the original Schofield Reference Bible. While you're turning there, I want to say we're glad to have Brother and Sister Brock with us in the auditorium today. They head up to work at Camp Maranatha. Been doing a wonderful job out there over the years. God's blessed them. Many people have been saved. Many young people have been helped during this camp ministry. We're always glad to have them to visit us here at Northside. They're always a blessing to us. I was just speaking to Brother Brock a few minutes ago, and he said they were in great need for some hay out there. They have horses and ponies uh, for the young people to ride and use out there at the camp. And there may be some of you good farmers out there listening. God's blessed you with a good crop of hay. And you'd like to donate some of this to Count Maranatha. I believe God will bless you if you do it. Give you even a greater crop next year. So some of you farmers, why don't you sacrifice some hay off of Count Maranatha and get it out there to Brother Brock and, and be used for a real good cause. You can get in touch with him at the Isla address. His post office box is Isla, Georgia. But Camp Marinette is located between Isla and Danielsville in Madison County. And I feel like there's some of you that God's blessed with some good hay that you could uh, get out there to do a good, be for a good cause and help them out tremendously. And so you do that. I'm counting on you to do that. And just tell them that you heard Brother Edwards mention it. And you just get that hay out there, give them a call, and let them know how they, they can get a hold of hay, and, and you'll be doing them a great favor. Now the message and the singing today, and also the music, of course, will be on tape number 210. Tape 210. I'm speaking today on this line of thought, 10 good New Year resolutions. I'm going to mention these 10 to encourage you that you might prosper during the coming year in every way. And you turn to Philippians chapter 3, but if you'd like to have the tape, just write in and say, Preacher Edward, send me tape number 210. If you'd like to have a list of our cassette tape, we have 200 listed. I'd be delighted to send you a list of our tape. And then we also have the beautiful calendars. We still have some of them left. You can still get the calendars. And just write in and say, Preacher Edward, send me uh, one or more of your new calendars. We'd be glad to get them in the mail to you. I want you to pray for us and stand by this whole mission work doing this coming new year. We're now in our 38th year of daily broadcasting from the classic city of Athens, Georgia. And it's not a fly-by-night ministry. We've been on the air a long time, long time before some of you were born. I was talking to a couple the other day who had to go down uh, in Ebbett County for, uh, to take care of the situation down there. And a lady heard that I was there at this place of business, and she wanted to meet me. And I went out with her son out to her home, and uh, she said, uh, Preacher Edwards, I just wanted to meet you. I've heard you uh, many, many times, uh, but said one of the main reasons I want to meet you is because of the blessing that your radio minister was to my mother and daddy for many years before they went on home to be with the Lord. Well, things like that keep us uh, keeping on for God and you that stand by us financially through your prayers and moral support make it possible for us to continue to get out the gospel during these days. And we want to do our part in getting out the gospel. Now you can write in. My mailing address is Virgil Edwards, P.O. Box 501, Athens, Georgia. 30603 is the zip code number. You write to me today and I appreciate it so very much. Now, Philippians chapter 3, a very important passage of Scripture on page 1259, beginning with verse 7. But what things were gained to me, those I counted lost for Christ, 
Yea, doubtless, and I count all things but loss for the excellence of the knowledge of Christ Jesus my Lord, for whom I have suffered the loss of all things, and do count them but dung that I may win Christ, and be found in him, not having my own righteousness, which is of the law, but that which is through the faith of Christ, the righteousness which is of God by faith, that I may know him, and the power of his resurrection, and the fellowship of his suffering, being made conformable unto his death, if by any means I might attain unto the resurrection of the dead. Not as though I had already attained, either were already perfect, but I fall after, if that I may apprehend, for that which I am also apprehended of Christ Jesus. Brethren, I count not myself to have apprehended, but this one thing I do, forgetting those things which are behind, and reaching forth unto those things which are before, I press toward the mark for the prize, the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. Now, if you notice here in verse 13, Paul said, forgetting those things which are behind, I press forward. He tells us here in the scriptures, I press forward, he tells us, forgetting those things behind and reaching forth unto those things which are before. Now, I want to mention 10 good New Year resolutions. I am not telling you you have to do these. I will tell you it will help you. You need to have an aim in life. Some may say, now, Preacher Edwards, I don't like to make resolutions. I probably break them well. You'll never expect to keep any if you don't make any. You need to set an aim for something. You need to have a goal. There's a man one time going to hire a feller uh, in, the, in the business world to uh, operate his business for him. And four men came in. And he said, I want to ask all four of you a question. Uh, he said, I'm going to tell you a little story. And then you ask the question if you... Well, he tried to inform him about the type of gun he used. Another man said, well, uh, uh, what type of shell did he use? He told him what type of shell he used. He said, the other man said, well, uh, uh, how do you know the thing is out there in the first place? So he told him how he knew about it. Man number four said, sir, did he get that arrow? He said, you got the job, buddy. You have the job because the main objective is to do the job to get what you go after and determined to get it and so you'll be the man that'll run my business for me now if you don't ever make any new year resolutions of course you never expect to reach these goals some of you have made them some have tried and failed but uh, try again and keep on keeping on until you accomplish some of these goals I'm going to mention today to the glory of God number one you need to seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness now you put God for seek him first in your life. In Matthew chapter 6 and verse 33, he says, Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. All these things shall be added unto thee. Some time ago, I was talking to an elderly man. He had uh, terminal cancer. And uh, he said, uh, Preacher, he said, If God will heal me of this terrible disease and let me live, I'll give my heart to him and I'll live for him. Well, that's not the way to get the accomplice. That man should have sought God first, gave his heart to God first, served the Lord, and then pray for his healing. But he said, if God will heal me first, then I will get saved, and then I will serve the Lord. That's the wrong way. That's the wrong attitude. You don't get it done that way. You must, first of all, seek the Lord. Put him first in your life and know that you know him and if you know him, you're well on the way. Secondly, have the fear of God in your heart at all times. In Micah chapter 6 and verse 8, the Bible says, He that showed the old man what is good, and what hath, doth the Lord require of thee, but to do justly, and to love mercy, and to walk humbly with thy God. In Deuteronomy chapter 10 and verse 12, And now, Israel, what does the Lord require of thee, but to fear the Lord thy God, to walk in all his ways, and to love him, and to serve the Lord thy God with all thy heart and all thy soul. Now God said the way to get the job done, the way to be used of him, the way to please him is to have the fear of God in your heart at all times. God told Israel, if you'll fear me, if you'll serve me, I'll bless you and take care of you and your need and your families. And God promised that. If you don't have any fear of God in your heart at all, you're going down the wrong road. And certain as I'm speaking to you today. And so you need the fear of God in your heart that you might serve him faithfully. Then number three, 
Let the word of God dwell in you richly. There's nothing any more important for the Christian than the word of God, the blessed book of God, the old King James Version. Now God said, let that dwell in your heart richly. Now it can't dwell in your heart unless you first put it there. Now you must study the scriptures. You must search out the scriptures. You must hear the word of God taught and preached. And then learn all you can about the Bible. It would be good for you to memorize many scriptures during this coming year. Now the Bible tells us in Joshua chapter 1 and verse 8. This book of the law shall not depart out of thy mouth, but thou shalt meditate therein day and night. Galatians chapter 3 and verse 16. Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly with all wisdom. Now you must study the word, give time to the word of God. I have here, it says, how does your life add up? A little sheet of paper I tore out of the daily bread. And it's calculated in this manner. If a person lives to be 70 years old, he sleeps 23 years out of that 70. He works 16 years out of the 70. He watches TV eight years out of the 70. He's eating six years. He's traveling six years. He has leisure four and a half years. Illness takes up four years. Dressing takes up two years. And religion, one half year. We do very little for God in comparison to what we do for others and for ourselves in this world. When we come to the end of life's journey, it's going to look mighty small. If a person lives to be 70 years old and has only served God a half a year at the age of 70, how about these that die earlier than that? We need to be faithful in serving God. God keeps the record and we come to the end of life's journey and let the word of God dwell in you richly. I told some of our people here this morning during our Sunday Bible school class, I teach the auditorium class here where men and women can sit together if they desire. And uh, we are teaching the book of Hebrews. Just started recently. We're in chapter 3. And I said to them, if you want to learn something about the word of God and know more about it, then you be here on Sunday morning at 10 o'clock with your Bibles and we'll try to help you learn more about the Word of God. But I said, if you don't care anything about the Word of God and you don't want to know any more about it, then you just sit at home and don't come. Beloved, listen to me. You need to be in God's house learning all you can about the Word of God. Let the Word dwell in you richly. Back yonder many years ago when God first saved me, I had a little New Testament, a little cheap New Testament. I didn't mind tearing the leaves out, a little paperback testament. And I worked at that time in the Dunning Silk Mill in Greenville, South Carolina. And each day I would tear out a leaf out of that little testament or chapter. On my job, I would memorize those verses. I would memorize those chapters. And today I can quote those verses far easier than I can scripture that I tried to memorize uh, six months ago. When you memorize scripture as a young person or as a young Christian, it'll stick with you and you ought to memorize some and read your Bible every day. Now, if you memorize uh, one verse of scripture a week, at the end of the year, next year, you would have memorized 52 verses. That's far more than the average Christian has memorized thus far. And some of you have been saved 35 and 40 years. It's not difficult to memorize one verse a week. You ought to be able to do that without any trouble. That would give you 52 verses at the end of next year that you could quote from the Bible. I wouldn't embarrass anyone. If I should ask how many of you could quote 12 verses from the Bible, I'd get very few hands out of the audience, I'm sure. That's a shame. Some of you have been saved 25, 30, 35, 40 years or longer and can't quote 10 verses out of the Bible. You need to learn the book of God. You sit and stare at the TV. You watch your worldly programs and you see the uh, programs on TV and spend hours doing that. But no time for the word of God. God help us to realize that. You ought to sacrifice time for your Bible. Read it every day. If you would read three chapters in the old and one in the new. Every day you could read your Bible through in a year's time. I challenge you to do that. I challenge you to memorize a verse a week. I wish you would. Number four, take all your burdens and problems to God in prayer. That's people, they loaded down with burdens, loaded down with problems, loaded down with situations they can't figure out, they can't handle it. 
but they never bother about carrying it to God. God wants you to unload on him. Unload your burdens, your problems on the Lord. There are some of you out in the radio listening to us right now. You're so burdened. You're so confused. You don't know which way to turn. You don't know what to do. Why don't you go to God about that? There's people sitting here in this auditorium I know that's going to God this past year about some of their situations and problems. And God came to their rescue and they're happy about it because they've told me so. Oh, listen, go to God with your burdens. The Bible says in Philippians chapter 6 and verse 7, Be careful for nothing but in everything by prayer and supplication. With thanksgiving let your requests be made known unto God. 1 Peter chapter 5 and verse 7 says, Cast all your care upon him. Why do you want to carry that old burden and load and perplexity into the coming year? Unload it on God. God wants you to do so. He said, take a yoke up on me and learn of me. My yoke is heavy. My burden is light. God will uh, take care of that yoke and that burden. And, and it, God will take the heavy part on himself and let you walk along yoked up with him. God will do that if you will uh, yoke up with the Lord and just say, Lord, I'm going to walk with you, but you carry the yoke. Back in olden times, they would yoke up two oxen and they had that heavy yoke across the back of their necks. And they would move along. And, and Jesus used this as an illustration. He said, if you take my yoke upon you. Now, my yoke is not heavy. My burden is, is light. So you just take it upon you. In other words, Jesus said, if you yoke up with me, I'll carry the yoke. You just walk along with me. Now, there's some of you church members carrying the yoke. You've been carrying it all last year. You're going to next year doing likewise. When you can very easily say, Lord, I walk along with you, but uh, you carry the yoke. God said, that's exactly what I want to do. That's exactly what I ask you to do. God wants you to do that. And don't go into 1986 worrying yourself to death. Don't know which way to turn. Don't know what to do. If you go to God and be sincere about it, God can help you. That's a resolution you ought to make and cut out that foolish worrying because you worry yourself to a premature grave. You worry yourself in the ill health and then you'll be dying before your time. A lot of people in the grave today that worried themselves sick, worried themselves in the ill health, worried themselves to a premature grave. You don't have to do that. God wants you to rejoice, praise Him, turn your burdens over to Him, shout to victory and move on to the glory of God. And then number five, not forgetting the assembling of ourselves together. Now there's some of you sitting out there in the radio listening audience, too lazy to get up this morning and go to Sunday school and church. Shame on you. God's been good to you this year. God's fed you and clothed you and spared your family in many ways. You're sitting there at home, your name on a church roll, and you ought to be in God's house. You ought to be ashamed of yourself. Good as God's been good to you, you should be sitting in the house of God in a Bible-believing church hearing the word of God today. Shame on you. You need to get ready next Sunday, the first Sunday in the new year, and be found in the house of God. The Bible said we need to be more faithful now than ever before. The Word of God says in Hebrews chapter 10 and verse 25, Not forsaking the assembly of ourselves together as a matter of some is, but exhorting one another that much as you see that day approaching. Paul said, Now we can see the day of the coming of the Lord approaching. Anybody that knows anything about current events, about the Bible, the signs of time, know we're down near the end of this age. And if you know that, there's never been a time in your life when you to be, be, be more faithful to the house of God than right now. You ought to be in God's house on Sunday morning, on Sunday nights, on Wednesday nights. And when you have other uh, services in your church, you ought to be there. You ought to be in the Sunday school because time is running out. The devil is cheating you out of service for God. And God will hold you responsible for neglecting the place of worship and neglecting the house of God. Now, you better believe that. He tells us not to fall away, not to stay at home when church service is going on. He said, be in church, for, get together. He said, you ought to do that. And that much more as you see that day approaching. It's a sin. Now you listen to me. It's a sin to sit at home looking at TV when the service is going on in your church when you know you ought to be there if it's possible, if you're physically able to be there. You know that. I realize we have sick people. I realize we have aged people, elderly people. That sometimes is hindered from being in God's house because of their condition. I know that. I'm not fussing on them. But there's multitudes 
that could be in the house of God. Instead of being in God's house, you sit there and watch that TV while service is going on in your church. And that's a sin. That's a sin in your life. And you're sinning against God in your church and God's people. And you ought to be ashamed. You ought to get right with God. Ask God to forgive you. And determine you're not going to do anything. Keep you away from the house of God this coming year. And so don't forget to assemble now. That means get busy, get up, get the youngins ready, go to the church, go to God's house and worship the Lord. You'll be glad you did. You'll be sorry if you don't, according to the Bible. Then the next uh, resolution I want to challenge you with is this, and I won't spend a lot of time on it because you know it already, and that is you ought to honor God with your tithes and offerings. Now I'm going to throw this challenge out to you on the basis of the Word of God, and I believe this with all my heart. If I didn't believe this with all my heart, I'd never preach it anymore. I just say, well, I just leave that part out in the Bible and say nothing about it. But I believe it. I know it works. I've tried it. It works in my life. It's worked in others' lives. And I know it. It worked. If you will give God Almighty at least one tenth of your income in 1986, when the last day of 1986 comes to close, you're going to be far better off than you would have if you didn't do it. Now, God is a good collector, and he doesn't collect the first day of the month every year. God may just wait a while to collect it um, in a wholesale manner. Now, God's a collector. Now, if you'll honor God, if you'll take care of God's business, if you'll give God his tithe, which is his, and then in addition to that, give God offerings, love offerings, and gifts above your tithe, you'd be surprised what God will do for you. You may say, preacher, what is my tithe? Your tithe is one tenth of your gross income. If you make a hundred dollars, ten dollars, that belongs to God. Oh, you may say, now, preacher Edwards, I make about five hundred. You mean to tell me that I'll have to give God fifth? No, you don't have to. God can cut your income down to about uh, uh, maybe two hundred, and you can give twenty, and that wouldn't be too bad. God can keep you out of trouble that way if you want Him to do that. The more God blesses you, and the more God gives you, and the more you earn, the more you ought to give. Now you'll be better off if you'll do it. You surely will. The Bible says in Malachi, God said, now if you don't believe that, you just try me. You just try me. I know people I've known for years, still stuck in the mud, can't get their head above the water, can't make ends meet, can't pay their debt, can't get squared away. And if you'll check their record, you'll find out they've been robbing God for years. You might as well forget about it. You probably never will get your head above the water. You probably never will get out of the mud. You probably never will be able to pay your debts and pay as you go. Now, you need to pay where you've already gone before you pay as you go. And you pay where you've already gone and then pay as you go. God will help you if you'll do that. I'm the only people I feel sorry for them. They're somewhat hard-headed and preach your heart out. And they'll just kind of grin at you and go on the same old way. All right. If you want to hurt yourself, damage your own spiritual life, rob God, come the end of life's journey, having laid up nothing in heaven, then you go ahead, hard head. God will take care of you at the end of the journey. But if you'll be willing to obey God, obey God because of the Bible, you're going to find out God will come to your rescue and God knows exactly how to do it. And God will slip you some handfuls on purpose that you never dreamed would come your way. I've had them happen to me even this past year. My wife can verify the fact I never dreamed that would come my way. Handfuls on purpose. I try to honor God Almighty. I intend to do so with my tithes and offers. You try that. 1 Corinthians chapter 16, verse 2. Up on the first day of the week, that Sunday, let every one of you lay by him in stores. God's prospered him that there be no gathering when I come. Said every one of you, not just daddy. Not just mom and I, every one of you, you young people that have a job, you're wise if you're a tither. I mean you're wise. You're wise if you tithe your income. You're acting foolish if you don't. Now's the time to start while you're young. Whether your mother and dad tithes or not, you ought to do it. If you have an income, you earn money, you ought to tithe your income. God will bless you and take care of you. And then you ought to prosper and pray that you'll be in health. The Bible says in 3 John in verse 2, Beloved, I wish you above all things that thou mayest prosper and be in health even as thy soul prospers. Now you listen to me. As a Christian, you need to pray that God will prosper you financially and materially. You need to pray that God will help you to maintain good health. God can help you health-wise. 
You ought to pray for your health every day. There should never be a day goes by what you shouldn't get on your knees. Ask God to help you materially and spiritually and help you physically. You most certainly ought to pray that God help you physically. One of these days as you grow older, some faculty of this body is going to break down. Some part of your body is going to give out. And it may be one that will cause you to have to take a trip to the cemetery. That's going to happen to every one of us. Now we need to pray daily, daily that we might uh, be strong physically. Old Dr. B.B. Caldwell, now in heaven, said to me one time, he said, Son, I'm an old man now, and said I have to really pray and fight to live. And he told the truth. He has to pray and fight to live, he said. And that's true. As you grow older... You need to pray more and pray for your health more and take care of your body, which is the temple of the Holy Ghost, that you might live longer on the earth. Amen. Now, another resolution is you ought to give up some of your bad habits you have. Now, I know some of you are caught and stuck with them. I sympathize with you. I don't fuss on you. I got caught with the tobacco habit from just a little child. From about seven years old, I chewed chewing tobacco like a billy goat chewing a, a piece of paper. When I was about 13 years old, I threw the chewing tobacco away and took on the cigarette. And when I was 21 years old, I gave the cigarette up. I liked to went crazy. I walked the floor for two weeks. It took me two years to get that poison out of my body. I sympathize with anybody that has that tobacco habit. You ought to try to kick it. You ought to break it. I know it's hard. I know it's real hard to give them up. But you ought to do it for your health's sake. And you'd be strong uh, spiritually and physically. And you'd be better off financing. Some of you young boys using that old scroll or snuff or whatever you call it. I have a little pamphlet here that tells where a young college student athlete that started using that stuff, contracted uh, cancer in his mouth, on his tongue, had to take his tongue out, finally had to take his jawbone off, finally had to take side of his face off, got on his body, and he died. A young man, strong athlete, shows his picture in uh, the Reader's Digest. I ordered several copies. I have some here or they here in my study. And it shows a fine young man, because he started dipping that smokeless tobacco, died with cancer when he was just a young man. You young people, don't dip that stuff. My goodness, you can throw that junk away, get your pack of chewing gum, and chew chewing gum like a billy goat if you want to. I'd throw that stuff away, that tobacco, and uh, those cigarettes never started. Uh, don't, don't ever start it. You want to be bothered with it. Get rid of it. You're smart. You're wise if you do it. Now, I'm going to say this. You might not like it, but I applied this to myself when I was young. You're foolish if you don't. I was very foolish to get hooked on tobacco. My family, my daddy's family, thought everybody in the family had to have tobacco or snuff. That snuff, that tobacco, that, those cigarettes had to come if nothing else did. My poor old granddaddy chewed it. Every time you saw him, he had a big chew in his mouth. My grandmother dipped snuff. On my daddy's side, my daddy smoked and chewed both. He'd smoke a cigarette, throw it out, take a chew the back, spit it out, take a cigarette, and died with a cancer. You listen to me. He killed himself smoking cigarettes. Oh, God help us to realize he died when he was only about 57 years old or 58 years old. And when in eternity, died with a cancer of the lungs. Oh, listen to me, beloved. You're killing yourself. You young people, you young girls, many young girls and women suck cigarettes. I'll tell you, that's repulsive. You ought to stop that foolishness. The first woman they caught sucking a cigarette in New York State, when the tobacco first came out, they put her in jail. And now you see more women smoking than you do men. And men give it up easier than women. You women ought to be ashamed of yourself. There, ought to be a time, there was a time when whenever breast cancer carried more women out the other type cancer nice lung cancer and throat cancer because of sucking cigarettes oh don't be a sucker much longer get rid of it start now make a new year resolution if you have to climb the wall backward give it up i thought i'd had to cut some sets backwards and climb the wall for two weeks i walked the floor but i said by the help of god i'm giving her up and if i hadn't given up the age of 21 i'd have been in foul shape today i wouldn't have been living today i'm quite sure of that and so give up your bad habits. You can do it. Don't tell me you can't. You can do it. And many of us, we just absolutely damage our body by many other ways. Overeating, we're all guilty of that. By the help of God, we need to try to keep our weight down. I'm a few pounds overweight, but I'm setting a goal, resolution. I want to get these few pounds off. I weigh about 204, 25. 
I want to get under 200 and stay there. Some of you are overweight, you're eating too much, wrong kind of foods, damaging to your health. You're headed toward the, the graveyard, high blood pressure, heart attacks, whatnot. You need to do something about that weight because your body is a temple of the Holy Ghost. And the more you put on that body, the more you're going to damage that body and you're damaging the temple of the Holy Ghost and God is not pleased with that. Now you may say, preach, I don't like that. Well, I'm trying to help you. Doctor used to give me a lot of medicine I didn't like, but I take the medicine to help me anyway. And he'll help you if you listen to this preach and do what I tell you to do. And then to render faithful service to the Lord at all times. Now listen to me. Now you let this sink deep down into your ears and you put both feet on the floor and look at me, look at the preacher. If you have a talent that you can use to the glory of God and you're not using that talent, you know who stopped you? The devil. And he's laughing big about that. He's so thrilled and tickled that he stopped you from using your talent. He did it. Give him credit. He did it. Now, if you have a talent that you can use the glory of God, by all means, use it. Use it. God speaks a lot about a talent in the Bible. Talents being used. God's concerned about your talents. He gave them to you. And God wants you to use them. And he'll give you more talent. And you'll be a greater blessing to the glory of God. Some of you people got talents you don't know you have. Discover those talents and use them to the glory of God. And do that this coming year. Then finally, make daily preparation for the coming of the Lord. Because he may come at any time. Be you all so ready. For in such an hour as you think not, the Son of Man cometh. Be ready to meet the Lord. Thank you. You've listened well. Let's stand to our feet. Dear Heavenly Father, I passed on these resolutions. God, I pray that you'll use them to help thy people. Lord God, I pray that you'll bless thy people. And may thy name be honored. And may Jesus be glorified. Our Father, I pray today that much... Much might be accomplished through this service that then help us all to take an aim, to set a goal, to be sure we get the object, we hit the owl, be sure, Father, that we knock a home run to the glory of God. Help thy people do so, I pray in Christ's name. Amen. Amen. Now, while Debbie is playing, if there's anybody in this building that's unsaved, backslidden, or you want to come down and you got to or something that I mentioned today in your life that you want to give up to the glory of God and place it on the altar, then feel free to come while she plays. For any reason that God is prompting you to come, you ought to come. How about it? Come on now. God is speaking.